everybody, John Wagnon with Dev Central, and in this video we're going to talk about securing Kubernetes. So if you've been following along in our journey here, we talked about what is Kubernetes, we talked about the Kubernetes API, now we're going to talk about security uh, related to Kubernetes. So, you know, there are inherent risks in Kubernetes, and Kubernetes, you know, is this amazing thing, but it's a complex thing, there's a lot of moving parts and pieces, a lot to think about. You know, you've got the cluster itself, like the, you know, the wholeness of the cluster, you've got the nodes and the pods and the containers and the code that's that's there and all those things, right? So there's a lot, lot to think about. So I'm going to draw a bit of a diagram here and we'll go through a few of the, uh, you know, a few examples, a few things to think about. And just as a quick caveat too on this, there is a lot in Kubernetes, right? I mean, you can spend hours on this stuff. So this is not an exhaustive list, but it's something to kind of get you, uh, get you thinking about it, some things to, to keep in mind. Okay, so in Kubernetes, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna write it in the uh, you know KH right because we talked about that in in the Kubernetes uh, video. So you've got a KH cluster, and you have the uh, you have the master node right. You remember that master node, and then you have uh, I'm gonna put maybe some worker nodes out here. So you have a worker and maybe a couple of those right. So and then these worker nodes, if you remember, have a variety of pods in them. And each pod has, um, actually I'll just say pod, <laughs> not necessarily pods. So let's say there's a couple pods in each of these worker nodes. And then each pod is gonna have one or more containers, right? This is where the containerized application and all the, all the container stuff comes into play. All right, so you have these workers with these pods. And then we talked about uh, the kubelet and the kube proxy and all, that, all, those, all those pieces that are contained here within the worker. But then up here in the master node, if you remember, we have the API server. Um, so I'll put that really quick. And we also have the etcd, the etcd, the key value store there. Um, there's a few other parts and pieces. Uh, remember the scheduler, um, all that. I won't, I won't list the entire thing. Um, but, uh, but anyway, you have, you have several pieces here in the, uh, in the master node. And then you have the worker nodes that all make up the K8s. And I'll just, I'll put it up here. Uh, the cluster, right? <clears throat> All right, cluster. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's give a, a a bit of an example. Let's say that you have a um, an application that is a you know it has like a message board. It has like a a web front end, and then it has you know this capability, this service where you can post messages and you know talk to all your friends and all that stuff. Um, and let's say that it has. Uh, a backend database that it interacts with, and let's say that there's like a user, you know, authentication uh, service as well. So I'll just list a couple of these down here. Um, you know, within these pods, you're going to have, uh, you know, you're going to have a web uh, front end, web front end, and you're also going to have, you know, the uh, the message board. So I'll just put message, and then you'll have maybe over here you've got, you know, some kind of user authentication, and maybe you have a you know, I'll just put a database DB, right? So there's a few different services that are contained within these worker nodes that are in the pods that have the containers in them. So there's all these different things to think about, like I just said. All right, so let's say that an attacker wants to get after this Kubernetes cluster, right? And it, you know, wants to do some attack stuff. So there's a few things using this example that an attacker could do. The attacker, um, of course, is gonna be looking at the master node to say, hey, if I could, if I could come after like the API server or certainly the the etcd key value store, those are very high value targets. And so, let's say that the attacker in this case wants to come after the API server itself. All right. Um, one thing to note about these pods is that every single pod gets what's called a service account. Uh, so I'll just put, uh, you know, maybe I'll I'll just put it right down here. So I'll just put like a little star and I'll put you know service service account. So I'll do that right there. So there's a service account per pod, right? And the service accounts um, have permissions that allow it to talk to the API server and make different requests, right? Well, if let's just say that the service account um, has, has bloated permissions, it has too many permissions, right? Uh, then the attacker could take advantage of some of that. And let's say that the attacker is gonna come after this web front end right here. Um, and let's say that there's a vulnerability in the code that runs the web front end. An attacker could come into the web front end um, and then use, using the vulnerability that exists inherently in the code that runs that web front end, maybe the attacker could take advantage of the fact that this service account has too many permissions. And let's say that this uh, vulnerability that, that exists here on the web front end, 
allows you to read a system file, right, which you should not be able to do. Um, and then let's say that the attacker um, takes advantage or, you know, uh, exploits that vulnerability and reads a token file from the system up here at the web front end, and then it uses that to send a request to the API server via this uh, bloated service account, right? Um, and it's asking, maybe it asks the API server to create another pod, you know, that it's gonna do things with, or, you know, a variety of things that it's gonna be able to ask of the API server, right? Or, um, again, using this token, maybe it uh, sends a request to read um, data from the database. That's also a really high value target because there's a lot, of, a lot of sensitive data possibly in the database, right? So that's one example of, you know, within Kubernetes, uh, the way that an attacker could, could manipulate maybe a service account and a vulnerability in the code to get after the API server or maybe a database, that kind of thing. A couple of things you could do on that uh, to mitigate that is you can use role-based access controller, RBAC, to limit access. Um, so uh, RBAC is the default. That's the that's default, you know, enabled by default in, in recent versions of Kubernetes, which is good, but you could also go in and disable that so you don't have to use it. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and so if you were to enable RBAC in this case, then that would have allowed the API server to know if a certain user can perform certain operations or not, right? So um, that could have that could have helped stop a part of this potentially, right? You could also add uh, firewall rules to your API server that only allow um, access from specific uh, IP port combinations, right? So maybe maybe the request is coming in from a, a you know from a, a place that it does not need to come in from, right? So the API server could have a firewall rule. Um, and you also could restrict access uh, to the database as well, right? From pods that, um, you know, if, if a certain pod does not need to gain access to the database, then don't let it gain access to the database, right? So you could do some access there as well, all right? So that's one example of coming after the API server um, using this uh, example of like a web front end. Another example would be if we want to attack um, etcd, which this is, uh, this is a, you know, we've talked about this in previous videos, but etcd contains the, the key value store that has all the information for the entire cluster. Like you can rebuild the entire cluster from the data that is stored here in etcd. So let's say that the attacker wants to bypass the API server and just go straight for etcd. Um, well, there are some things you can do here with etcd. You can use authentication and firewalls to restrict access to the to etcd key value, key value store as well. Uh, you can also encrypt all the data uh, in etcd, so all the data at rest, it's just sitting there in etcd. So that's, uh, that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, and remember too, the API server interacts with etcd. It, it you know, says, hey, etcd, I've, I've made changes like all the time. Etcd is gonna constantly be updated. So, uh, so that's a good, good thing to keep in mind to, to protect etcd. All right, um, the, the last one that I'll mention here in terms of uh, you know, things that attackers might try to do is we're gonna come back over here to the worker node, the pods, and then you know, remember these pods have the containers within them. Uh, many of them just have a single container. Some you know, can have more than one container. Um, but what, what attackers will try to do is break out of the container, as it were, right? So if you remember that in a pod, you have, and I'm just gonna write it over here, you have a kublet, right? And this kublet is connected to the pod and uh, allows, um, allows interaction you know, between pods or up to API server, that kind of thing. So what, what uh, attackers can try to do is take advantage of some, you know, uh, some, you know, some weaker security practices and break out of the container and get into the kubelet itself. So let's say that they were able to do that um, via a number of vulnerabilities that may exist here in this code get into the kubelet, maybe they have access to credentials at that point, you can talk to the API server again and pretend that you're, you're you know, that you're the kubelet and then the API server is like, hey, kubelet, you know, and then it's gonna do whatever it does with the kubelet, right? Um, so uh, one, one way to help uh, attackers stay within the container, or help a user stay within the container, is you, um, you run applications inside the container as a normal user, not as a root level user, right? So it's, it just makes it harder to break out of the container. If you're running the application as a normal user and not as root, then if you're an attacker and you're trying to break out of that container and you know, expand your access as it were, then if it's a normal user, they would first have to gain root level access and then break out, right? 
So, uh, you know, the, the overall thing to keep in mind there is just make it hard for a would-be attacker to break out of the container, right? So uh, that's just something good to keep in mind. Um, a few other best practices that I'll mention just around Kubernetes and security is you need to make sure you update Kubernetes, just the, uh, the framework itself, early and often, because uh, the framework itself can have security issues, right? Just like everything else, right? So try to stay ahead of those as much as you possibly can. Um, don't use uh, admin um, access or admin accounts for day-to-day -day operations, right? Save those for just the administrative operations. Um, another good idea is rotate your certificates often, right? So you, um, you know, if someone steals a certificate, then it's, it's not going to last for very long, right? So rotate those often. Uh, there's a couple other tools that you could use. Uh, there's a benchmarking tool um, or benchmarking tools. Uh, one of them is uh, Kube Bench, um, and or there's a host of others. But what that what that tool will do is it will inspect your whole cluster and give you suggestions on how you can secure it better, right? So that's a good thing to run. Um, you can also do things like uh, run managed services like Google Kubernetes Engine (GKE), uh, and just by doing just by using that service itself, it provides better uh, better default values on a lot of these things, right? That just kind of come out of the box. Um, the, and then the last thing that I'll mention is, and I'll put it right up here, you can implement uh, what's called a WAF, a web application firewall. So in any kind of a you know, well-architected Kubernetes deployment, um, there's a thing called an ingress controller, and we'll get to that later on in our journey. There, we'll have another video just on ingress controller. But in a, in a well-architected uh, well deployment, you have an ingress controller, and that's the single point uh, of entry for any of the, the data traffic that comes you know, into your Kubernetes, Kubernetes environment, right? And so you can put a web application firewall right there at the ingress controller and secure the perimeter of this thing, right? So if you have an attacker trying to come in, uh, let's say again, trying to you know, exploit this web front end, maybe the way that they got into this thing initially is through something like a SQL injection or you know, some kind of cross-site scripting attack or something like that. Well, a web application firewall would be able to stop that just out here at the perimeter. Um, and also I'll mention uh, web application firewall you know, generally, but there's uh, there's one that I'll mention specifically. It's called Nginx, Nginx uh, App Protect, right? And that's that's the name of the uh, the web application firewall. So we just put NAP as a you know as an abbreviation there, right? So Nginx App Protect specifically allows you to um, uh, you know put put this web application firewall into the automated CI/CD processes, the configuration for this one specifically can be managed with the Kubernetes API, right? So it's, uh, it's super cool. So in terms of automated processes, CI/CD, like I just said, the, uh, the, 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 the policy for the Nginx App Protect web application firewall can be managed directly in the API server. So it's, it's a, you know, I won't say it's a hand off, hands off, but it's significantly easier to automate everything, right? So, so you don't have to have another team managing just the, the WAF policy. You can manage it all together. All right, so those are, those are several things to keep in mind when it comes to Kubernetes security. Uh, like I said before, this is not an, a the completely exhaustive list, but it's a few things to kind of keep in mind. That it's like, hey, we've got you know, containers within pods, within nodes, within clusters, you know, and just all these different parts and pieces. And you, know, you need to make it hard for the attacker to come in and break into any one of these things. But again, there's a lot of, lot of entry points that they could have. So you wanna put as many hurdles as you can between the would-be attacker and then the target that they're coming after. So, uh, so these are just a few, uh, few things to keep in mind on how to secure Kubernetes. So hey, I, I hope you've enjoyed this Lightboard lesson. If, you, if you've enjoyed this, you can click up here on our Dev Central logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.